Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Lake MRI. And this is a quick example of a tear of the triangular fiber cartilage. And just hearing those words may make you start to sweat. If you don't see very many of these, even if you do see them, you still sweat because the anatomy is so intense and a lot of times there's motion and it can be really, really difficult. And you don't want to cause an, a surgery, you know, needlessly or overcall or undercall. So this is just a quick little anatomic review and in a case of an obvious tear just to get the anatomy down. And so hopefully you'll be a little bit less nervous next time. So to start off with, we always look at the ulna, make sure the ulnar variance is neutral. We want the ulna to end a little bit before the radius, and this is about right here. With that neutral ulnar variance, there's just enough room for the, the uh, triangular fiber cartilage to come across here. If it were too far distal, like if it was at the same level of the radius, then it would push the triangular fiber cartilage forward, and you get this ulnar abutment syndrome where the distal ulna will push on the triangular fiber cartilage and impact with the base of the lunate, and you get some bony cystic changes here, you get tears of the TFCC, and so we want to look for that morphology, but it looks perfectly normal, and you don't want it to be too low either. That's an ulnar negative variance, and when you have ulnar negative variance, then you get abnormal stress between the radius and the lunate bone, and that's no good either, but this is just about right. And now in this patient, we have the TFCC attaching on the radius. Hey, that looks good. We have it coming sideways here. This is the very central portion. This is called the central disc. The central disc should be more uniform and thick. It's kind of thinned and attenuated, so I believe they have a partial tear of that central disc, but no obvious full thickness perforation. If we roll one direction, this is towards the palmar aspect, we see the palmar band that comes across here. And then we come back to the central slice, the central disc again, which looks a little thinned. And then we come to the dorsal band, if we go the other direction. That's thick and looks pretty good. So these radial sided uh, structures are pretty decent. Now we look over here towards the ulnar attachments. And the ulnar, we should see a little cup. This is called the fovea. And we should see a foveal attachment, a little strand that comes horizontally. It attaches right in the epicenter of that cup. And in this patient, that foveal attachment is torn. This is part of it here. And there's a little gap between the triangular fiber cartilage and that foveal attachment right there. You can see the gap. And also, this ulnar styloid has an attachment. We should see a nice, well-defined band attaching here. But instead, there's gray material. We don't see that well-defined attachment. So they have a tear of both the foveal attachment and the styloid attachment and there's a separation. There's a pretty good distance between here and here. And lastly, we see this gray material going over the top of the uh, styloid, and there's another attachment of this called the ECU tendon sheath. This whole broad triangular fiber cartilage has lots of attachments. Some attach here to the distal, um, of the proximal carpal bones, rather. They're usually very small and hard to see. They also have, uh, it also has an attachment that wraps over the top of the ECU tendon. This is the ECU tendon here in the base of the fifth. It comes back over here. And again, the ECU tendon sheath is part of the TFCC. And I believe that is also torn, which is not uh, too surprising. And you may also note this. So this is part of the ulnar collateral ligament complex and ulnar joint capsule. This is torn and stripped off the distal ulna here. And this contrast is pouring out through the torn capsule and uh, ligament structures and through the TFCC and coming down here over the distal ulna. This will show up a little bit better in this T1 sequence. There it is. So this is uh, T1 fat sat. We can see that extravasated contrast. You can see this big mound of granulation tissue and scarring here through this big TFC, the TFCC tear, which is separated. And we can see the contrast coming down through this broad tear into the distal radial ulnar joint. So that's just a bread and butter tear, and the pressure is a little bit off. If you see something abnormal, definitely call it, and the surgeon just wants to know, is there something in there that uh, would justify the surgery? A lot of times if they um, ha order the MRI with contrast like this, they have a high clinical suspicion. They really just want you to mention something so when they get in there, the surgery is justified and they uh, can find what they, they know it's already there clinically. And of course, if it's completely normal, they want to know that as well. But as far as finding every little detail, if you missed the foveal attachment tear but called the styloid attachment tear or any other thing, they, they don't really care about that so much from what I understand um, because they can't really see. I've been to a couple surgeries and there's a tiny little space in there. It's hard to see anything. 
definitely can't distinguish between each uh, individual attachment. So really, it takes the pressure off the radiologist. Really want to see, is there a tear? Is there something suspicious? Mention it. And if it's just absolutely stone cold, normal, and beautiful, you know, mention that. But you don't have to be so precise and mention everything completely accurately. So that's uh, comforting. But anyway, just a bread and butter example. And just to run over the anatomy again, you have the central disc. And you have the dorsal and palmar bands. Here's the palmar disc. Um, palmar band, rather, dorsal band, central disc. Then you have the foveal attachment of the cup, styloid attachment here, and those are the main ones in the ECU tendon sheath, the attachments to the ulnar joint capsule, the attachments to the uh, carpal bones. Those are other minor attachments that are very hard to see anyway. But if you just remember these main ones here, the attachment to the radius and the ulna, you'll be in really good shape. So thank you so much.